why do some athletes choke, which is a word I hate to use, but it's a very common phrase that people assign to an athlete that was previously doing fantastic and then in a certain situation completely breaks down. Why do they do that? How can they go from one situation where they're doing fantastic, everything is just going great, and then literally, maybe even overnight sometimes, they totally fall apart. How is that possible? What happens in the minds of these great athletes? Well, from my experience, it comes from primarily three sources. Sometimes an athlete or a team, rather, uh, may have giant expectations of success based on past performance. I mean, they've won a lot in a year ago, three years ago, you know, three hours ago, and then they're expected to win right now. That can cause them a lot of pressure to succeed, a lot of expectations. Sometimes they're an athlete is a perfectionist. You know, they have to have everything just right. Every uh, ball has to be hit perfectly. Every free throw has to be made. So again, it can lead to a lot of pressure leading to fear. Fear is the big motivator here. No matter what the situation, no matter what the cause, fear is the thing that is the primary cause of failure. However, in my experience, uh, the primary cause uh, that can uh, or contribute to an athlete choking is a thing called situational anxiety. So really how it works is an athlete, great athlete, now I'm not talking about a beginner, right, some hacker who really doesn't know anything about the sport they're playing, they're just a recreational player. I'm talking about many times a professional athlete. They can go from one scenario, one situation, and they do great in that situation. Now sometimes that situation can be, let's say for golf, you know, which is my subspeciality. So a player goes from a mini tour, uh, a you know, a developmental tour, let's say, and they're burning it up out there. They're doing, you know, fantastic. And then they go to another situation, literally in a span of seven days, and they can't replicate the success they had just a week ago. What, what, what happened? What changed? I'll tell you exactly what changed. It's the circumstance and the situation that causes anxiety. So I'll give you an example. This past week on the Corn Ferry qualifying tour, I, I work with some players up there. I've been following them and following quite a few other players, in fact. And these are, I mean, we're talking about past winners in college or on some developmental tour around the world, something like that, or around the United States. I mean, these are winners now. And they're not they, they have experience winning tournaments. So it's not like they can't cross the line. They can because they've done it in the past. However, now they're getting real, real close to the ultimate prize. That is the Corn Ferry, which, you know, getting on that tour, the old web.com, which will then ultimately lead them to their ultimate goal, which is the PGA Tour. Then what happens is a series of communique happens in the mind which then sets up the failure, the, the scenario of failure. Well, what is that? Pressure to succeed, fear of failure. So, you know, I'm getting close to my goal and I don't want to lose this and I don't want to lose this opportunity and, you know, all my eggs are in this basket. I'm getting this, I'm getting older and, you know, a lot of guys come. All of these things, thoughts then, get in the get way of the success. Whereas just a week ago, because of that situation, it held no significance. There was no chance of failure. It didn't really matter, right? The situation and the circumstance did not matter. Who cares? This is just a, a nothing event. It really doesn't matter. But even more than that, it can happen in practice. This is when I see it quite a bit. So a player is fantastic in a practice round or they're great in practice. But then when they go out to a tournament situation, certainly in a tournament that gets them close to the ultimate goal, totally fall apart. Fear then, the fear of failure, which you have all heard a million times, this is the key. So if you're in a practice round or you're in some nickel and dime tournament in their mind, it may be some nickel and dime event or some kind of you know, tournament that doesn't mean anything. 
failure, there is, you can't fail. There is no failure. I cannot fail because this situation doesn't matter. However, when I get to this other situation, this other scenario, now this one counts. Oh, well, there you go. Because this one counts, then there's a real possibility of failure here. Over in that event, which was literally just five or seven days ago, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's a nickel and dime event, like I said. There is no fear of failure because there is no failure. You can't fail. More specifically, if you're on, a person is on the driving range or in the court or whatever, you know, a baseball diamond in practice, there can't be any failure. So if there is no failure, then there's no fear of failure. You can't fail in practice, can't fail in a, uh, you know, in a nothing event. So if there's no possibility to fail, then the fear of failure is non-existent. And so then you've eliminated any possibility of fear being a motivator. And therefore the body can react like it does, you know, when you're doing your best free from anxiety. Anxiety is another word for worry. So if you're worried about failure or if you're worried about not reaching your goal or my life's coming, you know, all these things, all of these things that get in the way of performance due to fear, fear of failure, all of those things then cause the body to get tight and out of joint and timing to go off the whole thing, right? There is that connection mentally, and physiologically, cognitive and somatic, both working together, they got to be on the same page. The body cannot function properly with uh, being tight or out of time. Certainly in a sport like tennis or golf or something with hand-eye coordination, I mean, you've got to have perfect fluidity or great fluidity, let me say, in order to pull off a shot that meets your expectation. But if you're tight and you're fearful and you're worried about failure, you know what's going to happen? Right, left, and everything else in between. And so situational anxiety is, in, in my experience, is the primary reason why athletes choke. I did a whole video series on this topic because it's one of the things that many, if not most, of my athletes come uh, to me to uh, try to help them overcome. Check the link below to uh, go to the, my website and uh, take a look at that work. It's a one hour plus DVD on how to overcome situational anxiety, where exactly does it come from, different scenarios that it does come from. Uh, I go into the, like I said, the cognitive and the somatic connections, the correlations in between those two. And like I just mentioned, uh, which is the most important thing, how am I gonna overcome this? How, how in the world am I going to be able to push through to the finish line? I'm so great in practice. And then when I get to the, you know, to the finish line, I fold up like a cheap deck of cards. How am I going to get through that? What are some of the techniques I can use to push on through that? If you are an athlete, parent of an athlete, coach of an athlete that has experienced situational anxiety, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, if so, please give me a call or send me a email at the information below. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Richard Trammell of Level 3 Sports Psychology.